Angie Stone is known for her music and for her controversial relationship with R&B heartthrob D'Angelo. So what was so scandalous about their romance that has people still talking about it decades after their breakup? Grab your favorite flavor of RRG popcorn and let's find out as we dig into the truth about Angie Stone and D'Angelo's relationship. Feeling hungry? Head over to rrgsnacks.com to purchase a bag of our gourmet popcorn. Available in several flavors, now you can enjoy our super messy videos all while getting your grub on. Use code POPPIN20 to receive 20% off your first order. Angie was previously married to Rodney Stone from hip-hop group Funky 4 Plus One. Their daughter, Diamond, was born in 1984. Angie and Rodney's love didn't last, and they eventually got divorced. Angie moved on. After several years, she eventually met the man of her dreams. It's unclear exactly where Angie Stone and D'Angelo met, but according to her interview with GQ magazine, the year was 1993. D'Angelo was a 19-year-old budding musician and high school dropout, while Angie was 31 and singing with a group called Vertical Hold. Angie told GQ that when she met D'Angelo, she knew he would become a superstar, and there was an innocence within him that she became protective of. Some might even say she was a mother figure to him. In an interview with Essence magazine, she described D'Angelo as being awkward. He wore glasses, had short hair, and wore his pants, quote, hanging down to his butt. Angie said, no one saw his beauty but me. It's unclear when they officially began dating, but after becoming an item, things progressed quickly. Angie became a shoulder for D'Angelo to lean on when he doubted himself and his talents. She said he suffered from low self-esteem and she constantly had to remind him how beautiful he was. Angie said she would look at him and tell him one day his lips, his eyes, and everything about him would become famous. D'Angelo contributed to Vertical Hole's 1995 album by co-writing a song with Angie entitled Pray. Vertical Hold broke up shortly after and Angie briefly joined another group while D'Angelo focused on kickstarting his career. D'Angelo joined multiple singing groups and even became a winner at the Apollo Theater. As he began crafting the music that would later be featured on his debut album, Angie became his muse. Although he didn't write any songs specifically for her, Angie said their love, her presence, and her spirit all flowed into his music. They were so in tune with each other that they actually started to act a lot alike. They also picked up on each other's musical habits. During an interview with Fox Soul, Angie said she was always a, quote, really tiny girl. Unfortunately, after battling chronic high blood pressure and sarcoidosis, an inflammatory disease that impacts the organs, she was placed on steroids, and the medication caused her to gain an excessive amount of weight. Since D'Angelo fell in love with her when she was smaller and he knew her weight gain was simply a medical issue, Angie said his feelings for her never changed. And since he also struggled with his weight at the start of their relationship, he understood that outward appearances didn't even matter. Although they were in love and loyal to each other, Angie revealed that D'Angelo was a bit controlling and very possessive. She told Essence magazine he was also very jealous and overprotective. But D'Angelo had nothing to worry about when it came to Angie. She said she never gave him a reason to doubt her. She said, I wouldn't even turn my head if he was driving on a freeway because he didn't play that. After signing with EMI Records, his song entitled You Will Know was featured on the Jason's Lyrics soundtrack and was performed by the group Black Men United. Next, it was time for D'Angelo to shine on his own. He recorded all of the tracks for his debut album entitled Brown Sugar. Angie also played a huge role in the formation of the project. She takes credit for helping him create the songs Jones and My Bones and Cruisin', and she also braided his hair so he would look presentable during the photo shoot for the album cover. Angie said it wasn't until the album was released in July 1995 that people started to notice how handsome he was. And in addition, they started to make comments about how he was too fine to be with someone like her. And then I was wow. in love with a sex symbol, 
and he was fine. And everybody was looking like, how did she get he? It was a huge blow to her ego, but she and D'Angelo's relationship was still solid and going strong. In September 1996, they attended an event described as fashion designer Giorgio Armani's tribute to D'Angelo. They rented a limo, and as they were driving to the venue, the car pulled over. Angie said D'Angelo was asked to get into another car, where he would be escorted to the event by Vivica A. Fox. Angie told GQ, It was a Hollywood moment. They wanted a trophy girl. I had to walk in behind them to flashing cameras. It started the wheels turning of what was yet to come. Things only got worse from there. When Madonna turned 39, she asked D'Angelo to sing Happy Birthday to her at her star-studded party. Eyewitnesses later claimed Madonna sat on his lap and began French kissing him in front of everyone. Although she was confident and knew that D'Angelo loved her unconditionally, hearing what the press had to say about their relationship still stung. Angie said people thought D'Angelo must have had ulterior motives for dating someone as old and as heavy as she was. She called that period of time a cruel reality. As D'Angelo hit the road and began touring, there was temptation everywhere. On top of that, he felt intense pressure from his record company to create a successful follow-up album. Feeling burnt out and unclear on which direction to go musically, his life completely changed when Angie gave birth to their son, Michael Archer II, in 1997. D'Angelo told Vibe magazine he was suffering from extreme writer's block up until he witnessed the birth of their son. D'Angelo said the floodgates opened and the spirit of love flowed through his body. They took their newborn son home and he and Angie co-wrote a love letter to their child entitled, Send It On. Sadly, they weren't able to keep their relationship afloat. Angie revealed that sometime after the birth of their son, they broke up. However, it took a few more years for them to really let go. She told Rolling Stone magazine, neither one of us wanted to be the first to say goodbye. Then she began experiencing health issues. Her weight ballooned to 230 pounds, and in 1999, she was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. That same year, 25-year-old D'Angelo welcomed a baby girl named Imani with a 33-year-old model named Marsha Daly. It seems that the birth of his second child is what really gave Angie the strength to finally walk away. She told Rolling Stone they would never reconcile because their relationship was full of, quote, heartbreak, disloyalty, distrust, aggravation. She gave her life to God and realized there was so much more to life than trying to go back to a relationship that was doomed. In the upcoming years, D'Angelo continued making music. He also dealt with weight issues, substance abuse problems, had a third child, and had run-ins with the law. Angie, on the other hand, was open to finding love. In 2000, she told Rolling Stone she was dating a new man. She wouldn't reveal his name, but she said she could hear wedding bells ringing. She added, I'm not getting married right away, but I know that this is my husband. The mystery man was never revealed, and by 2004, Angie was back on the market. She told Madame Noir website that while working on the video for the song I Want to Thank Ya, actor Idris Elba, who played her love interest in the video, tried to shoot his shot, but she wasn't interested. Looking back on the situation, she now wishes she would have given him a chance. As the years passed by, Angie was hospitalized for congestive heart failure, made an appearance on Celebrity Fit Club, and managed to drop from a size 18 to a size 14. Feeling much better and healthier, she was content with her life as a single mother, but things were about to change. In 2009, she walked into the airport and saw father of two and airline auditor Ashanti Graves working behind one of the desks. They exchanged information and talked over the phone for the next three months. When they met up again in person, Angie said they hugged each other and she knew he was the man she was going to spend the rest of her life with. After just eight months of dating, she revealed to Essence magazine they were engaged and planned on getting married at the Atlantis in the Bahamas. When she was asked if she thought it was too soon to get engaged, Angie said no, because she felt God had chosen the right man for her. 
Once again, she was in a relationship with someone who was younger than her. And just like D'Angelo, Angie said Ashanti was controlling as well. She eventually hired him to be her manager, and things were running smoothly in their personal and business relationships. Ashanti also stepped in and played the role of a father figure for her children, especially the son she shared with D'Angelo. Angie said D'Angelo was so busy getting his career and his life back on track that he didn't have time to play a significant role in their son's life. Even though their wedding location was picked out, Angie was taking her time finding a dress and planning out all the little details. Instead of tying the knot, she focused more on her acting and music career. In May 2013, she joined season two of R&B Divas Atlanta. Reality shows are no stranger to drama, but no one would ever suspect that the most scandalous event would happen off camera. Sources close to Angie told the YBF website that Ashanti was having an affair with a member of the show's production crew. A second source told the website that Angie ended their engagement and fired him as her manager. Years later, Angie told Ebony Magazine the rumors about Ashanti cheating on her were true. Not only was he hooking up with someone on the R&B Divas production team, but she found out he was also dating five other women. Angie said, I was the only one with blinders, but when I saw what was going on, I made a decision to walk away. Ashanti went on to marry someone else and apparently got divorced shortly after. In the upcoming years, Angie's love life has taken a back seat to her family issues. A March 2015 altercation ended with her 30-year-old daughter getting her front teeth knocked out and Angie getting locked up. As of this video, Angie is still looking for love, but she's more focused on her family. She told Big Issue North website she has children and grandchildren to feed, so she doesn't know when she'll finally be able to settle down. We wish Angie and her family nothing but the best and hope she finds the love she truly deserves. Let us know your thoughts about her relationship history and thanks for watching Real Reality Gossip.